Hello and welcome back to the series on Streamlit. In this series part one, we're dealing with all the complex features of Streamlit, what they do and why they're useful, before we move on to the later parts in which we start developing real world apps that are specifically targeted to kind of humanities based problems. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the session state, which is a fairly recent addition to Streamlit. By recent, I mean in the past few months. It's existed in the Streamlit framework by the user community as kind of hacky ways to get a, uh, to create a session state. In this video, I wanna talk about what a session, session state is, why it's useful, how to implement, and when to use it. So a session state, if you look at the documentation, is, is very clear. It's a way to share a variable between reruns for each user session. So what is a rerun? Remember, Streamlit is going to consistently rerun in the background. And when it does that, it reruns the whole script, unless you're using something like a form that only calls for a rerun after a specific button is pressed. We talked about forms in 0103 of this series. And if you want to look, check it out, there's a link in the description down below. What Streamlit session states allow for you to do is to store a variable outside of that rerun. And what this means is that you can have something that can be manipulated and changed like a list, a dictionary, a number, anything that you want, and it's going to be stored outside of a rerun, which means when the when the user reruns the script or, or does something that changes in the app, that variable is still maintained. And I'm gonna show you a very simple uh, uh, kind of demo of why this is useful and it's going to be very um, very simple we're going to do something a little bit more advanced later in the series when I show you how to create kind of an app that will allow you to cultivate named lists so you can kind of do named entity recognition relatively easily so for right now let's go ahead and just import streamlet as ST our goal for this app is going to be very simple we want an app that will take in a variable, uh, we're gonna call it counter, and it's going to iterate just once. And if you go through the, the Streamlit docs, you're going to see this example actually uh, demoed. This is not me coming up with it. So let's go ahead and uh, run our app. We're gonna do command, we're gonna do Streamlit run, and we're gonna type in, zoom in so you can see, we're gonna type in the name of the app. In this case, it's 0105 states.py. If you're doing an app, always better to name it something simple like streamlit underscore app.py. I'm doing this because this is a, a tutorial series. When we run that, we have the app open up. We can move everything now off of this screen. So what we have is a blank app right now. We haven't added anything. Let's go ahead and make an object. We're going to call this counter and we're going to give it the number zero. Now our goal with this app is a user will press a button and the counter will move up. Let's go ahead and just write out our counter on the app. Go ahead and hit save, and we should see the number zero right here, and it's green, which tells us that it is in fact a uh, an integer. So what we want to do is we want to have a button. So if the button, sorry, if st.button, remember this is a, a kind of a quick way to do a temporary button. So if st.button, we're going to call this up, is pressed, then what we want to see is we want to see counter equal counter plus one. And then we're going to st.write counter. Let's go ahead and rerun this now. Now we've got same thing that we have a button, press up, press up, press up. And we're not seeing the number good any larger. Why is that? Well, the answer comes down to the variable being repopulated in this session on each rerun. In order for this app as a, as a concept to actually work, we need to store this variable, this counter variable, outside of the app that we're creating. We need to leverage the session state, and that is why a session state is useful. Now, let's try to use the documentation from Streamlit to create a session state. One of the things that we can do, let's go ahead and comment this out. I'll leave it on the GitHub repo so you can kind of play around with both versions of this app. One of the first things that we need to do is we need to create that variable. It's always good practice to check to see if that variable exists as a session state. If it doesn't, then you need to create it. If you go through and you read the documents, you'll see this done right here. So let's go ahead and check to see if it is in fact in the session state. So to do that, we're going to create a condition. We're going to say if, and we're going to call this, let's call it counter. If counter is not in st.session underscore state, if that's not in there, 
and you're gonna see this kind of play out a little bit more, then we need to create that session state. So in order to create a session state, you're going to say st dot session underscore state, and you're gonna call it counter. This name is gonna to correspond to this right here. And it's good practice to use lowercase here and keep them simple, keep them very descriptive exactly as you would with a normal variable. We're gonna say that the session state is gonna be equal to zero. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's switch over to our little app. Let's rerun it now. And we have again a blank app. So let's do st.write. Uh, we're gonna do st.write. Uh, sorry, st.session underscore state. And now we're gonna say dot counter. Let's go ahead and rerun it. And we notice now that zero is printed up here at the top. Fantastic, this is what we want to see. Now let's try to recreate this concept where we're going to use a button to count this uh, variable up. So same concept, we're gonna say if button, we're gonna say up again, if button up is pressed. Now what we want to do is we want to say st.session underscore state dot counter. And we're gonna do a little, uh, I always try to be more verbose in my code, but it just looks better if you do something like this. We're going to tick it up by one. And then we're going to say st.write st.session state.counter. Let's go ahead and rerun that. Oh, if st.button, I apologize. There we go. Now we should be good. So now we've got the same looking app. We've got the zero right here. We got the up right here. Now if I click it, notice that everything is rerun. We have one. I rerun it again, and now we've got two. Keep on doing this and we got three, four, etc. on down the list. And we're noticing that our state up here, the st.write function, is actually iterating the, the past version. So that, that's what's happening. So let's go ahead and, and click up, up. Oh, let's go ahead and hit save there. And what we should probably do is move this counter backwards. So let's go ahead and do that. We, we need to make a change. Now if I keep on doing this, Notice that it's still going up. What's happened? Well, the variable is being stored in a cache. So this means that if I want it to kind of reset this variable, I've got a couple different options that I can do. I can either do this in app, I can make a button, a new button, let's say if button, we're gonna call this a reset, if button, oh sorry, st.button, if st.button reset is pressed, then we're going to say that the session state is going to be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and rerun this. We're gonna say up, and we got 11, keeping on going. And again, even though we rerun this app now, it's still holding that same variable. Now I can click reset, and it goes back. Oh, there we go. Now it will actually reset, keep on going up. Now we click reset, and it's going to go back to zero. Now this is a clunky app, it's not great. But there's another way that we can actually allow for a user to do this, and this is by using the settings bar up here in the top right corner of your app. If you click it, you'll notice that you have an option to clear cache. You can use these shortcuts as well, should you wish. So you can hit clear cache. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and do it. So now if I click up, it's gonna be back to zero. So this is a way that you can actually take the data in your app have a user give some kind of input or store something as a variable outside of a rerun. Now, some of you might be already seeing the potential for this. This means that you can do very robust things and create very dynamic apps in which a user can actually uh, do things repetitively in the app, such as iterate over a, uh, a set of sentences to annotate for text classification or named entity recognition. They can do things that are much more uh, robust. Think of something like Prodigy software, uh, which allows for you to very easily annotate stuff for Spacey if you're doing natural language processing, or images if you're doing some kind of image machine learning. So these kinds of things, these abilities to store variables outside of a rerun is essential for complex apps to exist. And no longer do you have to do this in a hacky way with Streamlit, it's all built in. To achieve this before, you would have to probably write 50 lines of code. Now it can be done very, very easily in just one line by creating, or two lines, by creating the uh, variable in the session state. That's gonna be all for this video. 
In the next video, we're gonna take this app and I'm gonna introduce a new feature. If you've noticed throughout all of this, we've had something very, very clunky. We've had to have this one kind of a pop-up now between these two buttons. We're gonna introduce you to something called a container and we're gonna show you how you can improve this so that this number keeps on populating and changing above all of your buttons. That's gonna be it for this video though. If you liked it, please like and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. I always try to keep all my content as free as possible to all the public so that everyone of all economic backgrounds can benefit from the same content. If you do enjoy the channel and you get a lot out of it, please do consider supporting it via Patreon.